Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about Wagner's Fence and Decking Sprayer. Now, we all know how important it is to maintain our fences, decking, sheds and garden furniture to make them last longer and, of course, look good. But quite often, using a paintbrush or a roller can both be time consuming and difficult. These painted jobs can be made a lot quicker and easier when using the Wagner Electric Fence and Decking Sprayer. Now in your box, you're gonna have a powerful 460 watt turbine, which is this. It comes with a fixed lead and a molded plug on there. It also has a shoulder strap. So once you're spraying, you can carry it on your shoulder or you can lay it on the floor or even hold it in the hand. You have a 1.8 meter hose which is detachable both ends one in the turbine and the other end in the actual handle itself great thing is you don't need any tools at all to set it up just push them in nice and tight the handle also detaches away from the attachment now the attachment comes with a 1400 millimeter reservoir for your paint if we unscrew that you'll see that there is some grease inside and a spare washer for any maintenance. We'll go into that a little bit more in detail later, but make sure you take them out. When you take the reservoir off, you'll see the suction tube coming out of the attachment. This can be pointed forwards or to the reverse. And of course it comes off for when you're actually cleaning, which we'll show that in a moment. Now, if you're painting anything above your head, you'll need to position the suction tube to the rear and spraying at that angle. But if you are actually spraying your decking, you will need to turn that suction tube forward when you're spraying down towards the floor. And there's also the handle extension, which is ideal for hard to reach areas like decking or ceilings. As for materials, the great thing is you don't need any form of specialized sprayable paint. Any paint, any color, any brand, all in your Wagner fence and decking sprayer. Now, most paints can be used directly from the tin. Give them a good stir up, pour them into the reservoir and test it on a piece of cardboard first. Now, if your paint needs to be diluted and you're wondering how much to, your stir -it can help because it has a marking gauge on the side here, which represents 10% dilution. You can place it right the way into the bottom of your reservoir. So, of course, if you put them 5% in, you just top the water up and watch it come up half of one of these notches. Give your paint a good stir up. Once you lift the stir out of the paint, it should run off nice and smooth into the top of the paint, not leaving a trail on the surface. It's worth spending the time now and getting this consistency perfect before you start spraying. And then screw the head back onto the reservoir. And at the back of the trigger, you have a paint dial here, which can be turned up to project more paint out or turn it right the way down to the back for a small amount of paint to come out. Click, connect, and then you're ready to test on a piece of cardboard. Now you can adjust the nozzle for different settings for different spray patterns. If you position it like this, it's ideal for spraying up and down. Or if you turn it to the side, it's perfect for spraying left to right. Or you can set the nozzle for more detailed pattern for intricate areas. Now the cleaning up is very important. Start off by unscrewing the bottom reservoir off the attachment. If you have any paint left in here, pour it back into the main tin. It can be reused. I'm gonna pour some water into that. Just let that soak for a moment. And then you have to start to take the sections apart. So removing the suction tube, unscrewing the nozzle. Great thing is you don't need any tools whatsoever. To take this apart, it's all done by hand. There's usually three sections there and you do have your little washer in there too. And you have your needle here where it's gonna be surrounded by paint. So we'll start off by rinsing that through under the tap. 
making sure that this area here is completely clean from paint. You've got no paint in here and no down here. You can turn the tap on, it projects that water through the suction tube until it starts to show it's clean coming out of the bottom. And now you've just got the actual reservoir itself. You'll find, find that the reservoir's nice and smooth inside. It's been machined, so it's very easy to clean. Now you've cleaned all the parts and you're happy that you've removed all the paint, you can fill that up with warm water and spray all the clean water through the nozzle to make sure there is no paint left on. Now you've finished spraying the warm water through, take it all apart to dry it off and double check that you do not have any paint left in any of the working parts. You might find this nozzle seal inside the nozzle here. So you can take it out of the nozzle, again making sure there's no paint around it. And when you put it back on, you put it to the front end of the nozzle and you slide it down. And when you look very closely to it, it has actually got a little groove that always must be pointing to the front of the unit. And then you can start to reassemble the unit. So we take the nozzle and you'll find there's four small notches notched out the inside edge of there. If you line them up with a little small nib that sticks up in the center, there is only one of them along the bottom of there. If you line that up and then press them down, you'll find it'll be more or less sealed around there just by pressing it. And then you can start to put it back together using the yellow union nut to hand tighten, not too tight, just so you can easily move the air cap. Then you can place the suction tube back in, pressing it down so it's nice and sealed here. And then it can be screwed back down ready for use next time. Now there is a spare nozzle seal, if forever that one gets lost or worn out. And then you also get some grease where you can rub that around your finger and there's a black O-ring that you'll see in there, that's rubber, making sure that you've got plenty of grease in and around that. And what that'll do is make it a lot easier for when you click and connect and then it's ready to use for next time. All Wagner products benefit from German engineering. The fence and deck and sprayer comes with a standard three year guarantee. However, you can register on Wagner's website and extend that three year guarantee to four years completely free of charge. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.